high school was bad. I was uh, Catholic, went to Catholic high schools, Catholic boys' school. My dad was a Catholic deacon, my mom was a Catholic lay minister, and my family was very Catholic. And there were no gay people in my family, and no openly gay people at my school, but I was picked on because, you know, I liked musicals, and I was obviously gay, and some kids didn't like that, and I did get harassed. My school was pretty miserable. I lived in Spokane, Washington, which is a mid-sized town with a small town mentality. And I was picked on mercilessly in school. People were really cruel to me. I was bullied a lot, beat up, thrown against walls and lockers and windows, you know, stuffed into bathroom stalls. People shit on my car, people scratched my car, broke my windows. And my parents went in once to talk to the school administrators about the harassment I was getting at school, and they basically said, if you look that way, talk that way, walk that way, act that way, then there's nothing we can do to help your son. Honestly, things got better the day I left high school. I didn't see the bullies every day. I didn't see the people who harassed me every day. I didn't have to see the school administrators who would do nothing about it every day. Life instantly got better. If there are 14 and 15 and 16 year olds, 13 year olds, 12 year olds out there watching this video, what I'd love you to take away from it really is that it gets better. However bad it is now, it gets better. And it can get great and it can get awesome. Your life can be amazing, but you have to tough this period of it out and you have to live your life so that you're around for it to get amazing. And it can and it will. When I first came out to my folks, they weren't thrilled. My mother said she never wanted to meet any of my boyfriends um, or boyfriend, uh, and I was never to bring a man around uh, that I was dating to the house ever. And my mother recently passed away, and she told me to, tell, to let Terry know that she loved him like a daughter. <laughs> and she did love you like you were my spouse, and you were she welcome did. in the house, and. Our families are really accepting, and you would think, you know, my evangelical Catholic parents and Terry's conservative Christian parents who sent him to that awful school, that our families would reject us forever and never get over it uh, and wouldn't embrace us. And both of our families, Terry's family, his mom, his stepdad, and my family uh, love us and accept us and include us. We're treated with the love and respect that we deserve as members of the family, and it's, it's great. We have great families. We met out in a bar, I was out dancing, and... I was I, out staring at cute boys dancing, because I don't dance. And I came up to talk to a friend of mine who was in drag, working the coat check, and Dan was there, and... And I had been saying to the... who was also a mutual friend of mine, we didn't know we have this friend in common, I'd been saying to the drag queen, oh my god, look at that cute boy, look at that guy, he's so gorgeous. And then Terry walks up, to the coat check and the drag queen says, tell him, don't tell me again, tell him. He's standing right in front of you, tell him. And what did I say to you? <laughs> you said, you said. Tell him. He said, you've got a really beautiful mouth. I think it was more deliverance. I said, you have a pretty mouth. <laughs> yeah, okay. So and then what did you say to me? I said. Which is uh, even cheesier. I'm sorry, this is so cheesy. I said, the better to eat you with. It was love at first innuendo. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. roll your eyes while you like. It was a pickup line that worked, right? Here we are 16 yeah, years exactly. later. 16 years later, it worked. One of the greatest things that's happened to us since we left high school and meeting each other is we adopted our son, DJ, who is an amazing kid. He's uh, smart and witty and ironic and sardonic, and he's a great little athlete. He's a snowboarder and skateboarder, and he's really talented. We adopted DJ at birth. Uh, it was an open adoption, so we met his mom before she gave birth, and we still know his mom. And it's really been the last 12, almost 13 years now. DJ's gonna be 13 in March. Uh, it's been great. Uh, I didn't think when I came out to my parents in the very early 1980s when AIDS was slamming into the gay community that I would ever be a dad, uh, that I would ever give my mom and dad another grandchild or make uncles of my brothers and an aunt of my sister. I remember um, going to Paris as a family the first time, the three of us, and uh, DJ, our son, couldn't sleep because he had jet lag and Terry was exhausted and wanted to sleep and we kept trying to get DJ to go to bed and eventually um, 
I just figured I'll let Terry sleep. It's either all three of us don't sleep or one of us gets to sleep. So I went out in, at four o'clock in the morning uh, and strolled through the streets of Paris with DJ as the sun came up and we talked. He was, I think, five years old, four years old. And we just chatted and we strolled around Notre Dame and the Marais and the bakeries open. And we went to the back door of a bakery and ordered some uh, croissants with sugar crystals on them. We got some juice and we sat and watched the sun come up with the Eiffel Tower off in the distance. And it's one of my happiest memories uh, as a parent, as a human. Some of my best memories uh, include Dan and DJ just being on the top of mountains complete bluebird, sunny day, and nothing but fresh powder below us, and all three of us can hit, plow, like, the mountain. plow double black diamonds down together through avalanche country. Yeah, and if you had told my <laughs> musical theater queen, 14-year-old self, that one day I'd be doing double black diamond runs on a snowboard, I would not have believed you. Those moments make it so worth sticking out the bullying and the pain and the despair of high school. And if you can just do that, you have moments like that and so many more ahead of you. And they come when you least expect them. I thought I'd be asleep, not walking around Paris that night. Uh, and they come at you all the time. And if you, at, you know, the worst time of your life, really, for many gay kids is high school. And if at that time of your life you choose to end your life, you know, the bullies really won then, and you've deprived yourself of so much potential happiness. If my adult self could talk to my 14-year-old self and tell him anything, uh, I would tell him to really believe the lyrics to uh, Somewhere from West Side Story. There really is a place for us, and there really is a place for you. And one day you will have friends who love and support you, you will find love, you will find a community, uh, and that life gets better and that the bigots don't win. The people who were picking on me then uh, are completely irrelevant. I don't know where they are now. I don't know if they're happy. I assume that they're miserable because miserable people like to make other people miserable. Um, and once I got out of high school, they couldn't touch me anymore. If I could say anything to any uh, middle school or high schooler watching this who is having troubles in school with bullies, questioning their sexuality, or just questioning the way they look or act, um, I would say this, living well is the best revenge. And if you can live through high school, which you can, you can totally live through high school, you're gonna have a great life. And it's gonna be the envy of all those people that picked on you while you were in high school and middle school. So just stick it out. It's painful now, but it's gonna get so much better. Yeah, we're very happy to be alive. Yes, we're ecstatic to be alive. And you know, life has its ups and downs, it has its challenges, there are tough moments. You still gotta work, you still gotta pay bills, but in between all of that, it's really, we have really great lives together. And you can have a great life too.